is nuts. Like absolutely crazy. I cannot even believe my eyes. That's why it's called the greatest show on the earth. On the full moon day of the Hindu month of Shravan, which falls between July and August of the Gregorian calendar, the fishing communities of Maharashtra, especially those on the western coast, pray to Varun, the god of the sky and the oceans, to bless them with calm waters and protect them from natural calamities. This day, observed by the fishing community, is celebrated as Narali Purnima, where they offer rice, flowers, and coconut, which marks the beginning of the fishing season. <laughs> 15,000 kilometers and 36 hours in the air from Colombia, and you land straight in the Mayan, that is Mumbai. Mumbai is chaos, but it's a beautiful one. It's a city where you don't move, but the city moves you. It is home to some awesome street food, and like everyone knows, Bollywood. You know, I'm so excited to be back in Mumbai after two crazy years where the world didn't know what was happening, and specifically to be back in Mumbai at this period of time, I truly believe that if you want to get to know a culture or a place, you should do it through its festival. During this festival, the city turns into a roaring carnival as millions of devotees step out to offer their prayers in beautifully decorated pandals where elaborately crafted statues of Ganesha are installed and is really a sight to behold. It's just probably the most incredible thing to see how millions of people with their belief system and their faith, they come together to one single place and everyone is thinking about the same thing at the same time and that just creates magic. Even though I'm jet lagged and haven't slept in days, I went straight to a pandal that many people call the epicenter of the festival. I am at the pandal of Lalbag Charaja, or the king of Lalbag. Gampati Bappa! This pandal draws over 1.5 million devotees during the festival and is common for visitors to stand in line for almost over 24 hours just to touch the Lord's feet and seek his blessings. So this year, Lalbak Charaja completed 88 years and you can imagine how many devotees come here.
it is believed that we only go to Lal Bagh Sharaja when the Lord calls you. This pandal was started by the members of Koli community of this area way back in 1934 when they persuaded a local landlord to dedicate a plot for a market for them. As I make my way out of the Lalbagh Charaja Pandal, I have prepared myself for the sensory overload of this 10-day mega festival as I arrive at the Grand GSB Pandal. to be in Mumbai for this season because whenever I go there's a gump at the end. They're all like astonishingly beautiful. Like just look at that. You have to be here to actually live this atmosphere. At the GSB Pandal I met Ganesh, an old friend who is a volunteer at the Pandal during the course of the festival. How are you, man? Good, yeah. Have you eaten anything? Uh, but, but why are you asking that? Yeah, I had some breakfast, but it's the way we greet people in our community. How oh, nice. Just to check, maybe where are you right now? What is your temperament like? Good, yeah. While the Pandals have thousands of volunteers in different capacities, the main volunteers are the ones who are dressed like Aya, a simple cotton vesti and a stole. Most of these volunteers are well-settled professionals from different walks of life, but united by the belief in Seva, or different services to the society. If by any chance it was not obvious that I'm not from here, now it is. Have you been on this swing before? On a swing, yes. Not, not this, not this swing. swing. What is happening? This is called Tula Bar. Tula Bar. One such ritual is the ancient Hindu practice called Tula Bar. A unique tradition of taking vows to donate something to the society was started at the GSB Ganpati Pandal and has been in practice for the last 68 years. The idea is that on one side you sit and on the other side you put equally amount of your weight in food and that's going to be offered and then cooked and given to everyone who comes here. Yes. That's insane, man. Around 15 to 20,000 people come here to pray and every single person leaves with a bag of prasad, which is blessed offerings to the deities. It's called prasad. Prasad. Prasadam is actually a small goodie bag with little treats of sweets, fruits, and savory items. So I really like because they're actually just giving tasks for every single person. Yes. So there's baskets of coconuts, baskets of bananas, apples, pomegranate, flowers, appams. So they just do a chain work. It's like a kitchen. Once it's fully packed and secured, it's put in these baskets. That's called seva. And then we volunteer to take these baskets onto the other side where people are gonna take it home with them with blessed food. Hello, hi, namaskar. Can I join you? Yes. So all the women are doing what I consider is the most important part of cooking. Without prep, without chopping, there's no food. Women will sit here, sing, chop vegetables and get everything ready so that everyone can actually eat. I mean, after 16 years of cooking professionally, I'm in the middle of this group of women with this beautiful music, cooking with them. This is something that I don't think a lot of chefs have ever done in their lives. Ah, I know this song. I know something. Gambati Bappa! Mangal Murti! To 
we have approximately about close to 3,500 to about 3,800 registered volunteers, all belonging to our GSB community, which is the Gaud Saraswat Brahmin community. Uh -huh. So in the kitchen, if you look at it, we have close to about more than 100 people. This is absolutely insane. I've never seen this many amount of rice in my life. It's super hot, you burn your hands, and please don't forget, this is holy rice. Next one. I don't know what's happening. This is crazy, there's too much information happening, and this guy goes so fast, my arm is killing me right now. We use approximately close to about 1,000 to 1,500 kgs of rice every day. I cannot even visualize that amount of rice. Like, it should be like a mountain, no? Like Absolutely, absolutely. We call it as the dal or the uh -huh. asam, yeah. the sar in our language. We prepare approximately about 1,000 to 1,300 liters of that particular dal or, or rasam that we do. We have approximately anywhere between about 18 to 20,000 people Oof. having food every day over here. And 20,000, I'm only saying, is the lunch. For your information, we also have the morning breakfast, which is also served for close to about close to five to 8,000 people in the morning. Wow. Which is a proper Indian breakfast. In our community, we have something called Madastan. Here, after eating the food, there is also some blessings in the leftovers of the banana plantains, you know? In the leftovers? Yeah, like when, when you eat a hearty meal, there is some blessings, right? They actually get fully washed and cleaned before they go and roll over the leftover food. Now, once they're washed, we cannot touch them. They're clean and pure to do this. This is pretty incredible to see how everyone is respecting what is happening. No one touches them and everyone opens a path for them to go out. Madastan, what an experience it is to witness something like this for the first time. I had a severe slip disc. I was not able to stand even for 10 minutes. I was going through a severe back pain. Since then, I was I am doing till date all the five days. On five days, I do two madastanas, and from that day onwards till today, I don't have any slip disc, and God has relieved me from that pain. The bliss and it has absolutely transformed my own life over this year because I've, do, I've been doing this since almost uh, 14 years now. You do every, it every, day, year. every year, five days. Rolling over the leftover food and absorbing the blessing of countless devotees, the journey has been truly overwhelming and gratifying. Witnessing the beautiful relationship of faith and God faith and humanity, faith and giving, faith and strength. Amongst the many things that Mumbai is, it's also a sleepless monster that comes alive during the 10 days that Bappa comes visiting. This is the time when every little pocket in this bustling city is lit, decorated and brimming with energy. Day turns to night and night to day, but it feels like nobody ever sleeps. So this is quite interesting because I'm on a train from Bombay to nowhere, literally nowhere, because I'm actually not going to a specific city. There's a moving Gampati in a train 
And it's pretty crazy to realize how important Ganpati is for the culture here in Mumbai. Because wherever you go, there's a Ganpati, even on a moving train. Like, I know there's a Ganpati, but I don't know, you guys know? Yeah, the Ganpati is to, uh, in that bogey. Murti Ganpati Bappa! This is crazy. I've never been in a place like this in my whole life. I know, right? Yeah. I found it recently too. But have you heard about Nashik Dhol? It's the most famous Dhol uh, in Maharashtra. So the Dhol is like the, the drum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That drum. Oh, I that heard track. that like a couple of days ago. I was in a temple mm -hmm. and they started playing that and I was just getting goosebumps all over the place. It was crazy. Yeah. So you're calling Nashik Dhol. Is it from Nashik itself? This particular beat and the rhythm is from Nashik. It originated in Nashik. That's yeah. why it's called Nashik Dhol. Well, I guess I'm going to Nashik now. <laughs> <laughs> One path leads to another, and the dots are joined unexpectedly. I found myself in places that were totally off the grid and not part of my travel plans. I'm now in Nashik, a beautiful city by the banks of the river Godavari, a city with its own special connection to Ganesha. I'm now on my way to meet Amy, who runs Nashik Old Female Dol Tasha Group, locally known as Dol Pataks. Two beats over here. Okay. One. Two. Yes. One more. So that comes like... Yeah. As we say, like every state, every wow. festival has its own instrument mm -hmm. that is, you know, purely dedicated to that lord or maybe that festival. So when it comes to Ganesha, it's Dhol. It has to be Dhol. Nothing else. You go to Pune, you go to Mumbai, you go to any damn city place in Maharashtra, you will find Dhol. Genuinely very exhausting. This thing weighs like 11 kilos. And when you see all of these beautiful ladies playing like crazy and it takes like some kind of energy from another level to just be able to do this for hours. It, it is just probably some intervention from above that is giving them the strength and the, and the willpower. Also their belief, I think that kind of helps them to get through. It's not like I'm an observer anymore. I'm literally blending in and feeling the whole experience from my own side. You know, once you're playing with them, you don't have to understand basically anything. You just blend in with the culture. You're part of the celebration. And you just kind of let yourself go. That's quite fun. After this electrifying high, I go along for a local homely experience with the beautiful doll players. But just in case you're wondering where I am right now, I'm surrounded by these beautiful ladies who are teaching me how to make these modaks. Well, we are basically making these modaks mm -hmm. to offer them to our one of the most ancient deities of Nasik. But this is one idol that is entirely made out of silver. 
and they keep adding silver to it okay. and it grows bigger. Okay. Yes, and it is absolutely located in the center, the heart of the city. This is the favorite of this Ganesha. This is his favorite. Really? While wrapping up the sweet fillings of coconut and jaggery, the flour-based dumplings, I felt like an excited kid helping out in the family kitchen while preparing for the feast. And just like we have Lalbagh Charraja in Mumbai, Nashik's most popular ganpati is the 104 years old Channicha Gampati. Here, the idol of Ganesha is made up of 201 kilograms of pure silver, and with every passing year, another layer of silver is added to it. After experiencing so much in such a short time in Nashik, I really wanted to get to know the people behind this massive celebration. And so I'm here to meet another brave Dole Patak player. I met my late husband over here around 22, 23 years back. He, we lost him in last October, actually. Oh, I'm so sorry. So it's, it's, it's a great emotional connection for this place in my heart. On the banks of River Godavari stands a 250 years old Navsha Ganpati temple. The word Navsha comes from the Marathi word Navas, which means that the Lord will grant all the wishes of the devotees. It is here that we are supposed to whisper our wishes in the ears of Mushak, the mouse which sits at Lord Ganesha's feet. In my was a tabla. Sharad used to play tabla. After he passed away last year in October, I had that thing in my mind that I should do something connected to him, which would somewhere, because every place I visit, like Nausha, every place in Nasik, entire Nasik, he's with me, blessing me every now and then, every moment. And that is how I got connected to Ami, basically, the Dhol Pathak. And yes, every moment I play, I feel his aura around me. He's the one who is making me play it and dance to the tune of two. You know, it's always been a little bit difficult for me to put into words how I feel when someone passes away, when they leave their physical body. You just gave me a different perspective to this situation and is that whatever experiences that we share with our loved ones, once they leave their physical body, their energy and their memories and their experiences, they will always stay with us. And that could be a really good learning for us to just move on, pray to Lord Ganesha for a new beginning and keep going on. Yes, indeed it is. Indeed it is so. When you learn something, it's always easier in a certain way to, to do it, no? But now it's like the D-Day. All the practice yeah. will be judged by the last performance. Yeah. Going in the bus with all of you and everything, yeah, I can feel my heart like boom, boom. How long have you been doing this? When I was playing, it feels like you've been doing this for generations, no? Oh, my soul for generations, but uh, if you can consider years, for eight years. No? So yes. in eight years, you really managed to have three generations of women <laughs> in the same... That's very impressive. Like, if I had one of these, I would have said hats off to you because of the effort and the Pleasure. job that you're doing. Somehow, I don't know why, somehow, this happened and I had to fly 15,000 kilometers, kilometers during he two days to, to got here to be Probably here. Probably it was he who must have called you. Probably, see, he's right in front that of me. That is what I said, he must have called you. My journey to Nashik has put me in a divine trance as I surrendered to the mystic rhythms and vibrations of Dol. You know, the Kolis are the original 
And they were here before it was Bombay and when it was an archipelago of seven islands. Gauri Visarjan is the one who comes to Gauri, he comes to Maike. They say, if you want to know a place, one should know it through its people. If you're up for a culture trip in Mumbai, then the people to look out for are members of the Koli community. To dig a bit deeper, I'm meeting my friend Chef Vicky at the Versova Fisherman's Village because he has promised to introduce me to some of the members of the Koli community that will let me have a peek in their culture and celebrations. Welcome, welcome to Mumbai, man. No, no, thank you for meeting it's me here. It's been a long, long time. You know, the Kolis are the original. And they were here before it was Bombay and when it was an archipelago of seven islands. So they've been around since then. And they formed a whole landscape of this, this whole place. You know, they've provided the best seafood. They've developed the coastline for us. So they are very big survivors. And at the end of the day, it's a fantastic community. Let me introduce you to someone. She's very important, a very eminent personality of the Kohli community. You have to meet her here. Yeah. Namaste. Ah, hello, Namaskar. This is a special friend of Colombia. His name is Chef Pablo. Chef Pablo came to Mumbai and he does a lot of Ganpat Ticha. So I told him that the most important thing is that the most important thing is that the Gauri is considered in Maike. The Gauri is considered Ganesh's mom, who's actually come back to her parents' house. Okay. What do they eat in Pooja? I told them that it's big. Yes. But actually... They eat it like this. They give it like this. You have to come to the two days. This is also what we will eat. She's actually invited you to come for two days. She's actually invited you to come for two days. She's actually invited you to come for the Visaljan. As well as you can see how they actually make this fish. You're sorted, my friend. Thank you so much. As the name suggests, Gauri Puja is performed to honor the great goddess Gauri, who is the mother of the great god Ganesha. The goddess Gauri belongs to the fishermen's community. Every tribal you visit in India, you will see women have been given great respect because tribals, they worship Shakti or goddess. Okay. And every woman in the tribal community is worshipped like a goddess. So the ladies, what they do is during Gauri Puja, they invoke her presence. They sing songs, they dance, they have fun and frolic like this. They prepare a lot of food and they put a lot of food into the prayers because of the abundance. And also it's quite unique because that during Gampati usually everyone goes vegetarian, but people who worship Gori, they actually eat fish. So I think that is really beautiful to have that contrast about the same sort of beliefs, but in two different perspectives. For the fisherman community, it is the day of Gauri Visarjan, which usually falls on the fifth or sixth day of the festival. 
It is a grand occasion where the idol of goddess Gaudi is dressed like a bride and taken into the sea on large fish trawlers. Almost 15 kilometers into the deep sea, braving violent tides, the devotees remain relentless in their celebration of the goddess. Singing and dancing to the beats of the drum and chanting devotional songs, asking her to come back again next year. It is believed that the act of immersing the idol in water reminds us of the concept of Visarjan. Visarjan, an act that shows that while forms and things in the universe are always changing, the energy remains the same. I am just so amazed and astonished after what I have just experienced. It is incredible to witness the hardworking and strong fisherwomen who come together as a community to lift Goddess Gori, as a sister, as a mother, and as a daughter. It is truly heartwarming to see how everyone invites Ganesha into their home. However small and humble, they open up their hearts to their beloved God during this wonderful festival. The pulse of this festival can be felt in every home as you stroll through the gullies of Mumbai and witness people carrying their beloved Lord Ganesha with so much warmth, positivity and joy. It gives you goosebumps. If you happen to be in Mumbai at this time of the year, it doesn't matter what direction you're traveling in or what the time of the day it is, because you're bound to encounter Bappa somewhere along the way. Like all good things, these 10 days of mega festival is coming to an end. As you can see, there's a lot of clubs behind. They're all getting ready for the D-Day, for the D-Hour. <laughs> This is nuts! Like, absolutely crazy! Like all good things, this 10 days of mega festival is coming to an end. With over 20,000 policemen on duty and 74 roads closed for vehicles, the energy is electrifying. And finally, I'm ready for the grand finale of this never-ending party as Mumbai gets ready to immerse around 200,000 Ganesha idols You know, in the middle of the madness, it's really hard to see the organization. I'm not really sure how they're making it, but we're completely surrounded by cops all the time.
in this grand, grand, grand event. It's going to be super chaotic. And as you can see, there's a lot of clubs behind. They're all getting ready for the D-Day, for the D-Hour. <laughs> So today I'm in the middle of this madness with ACP Kalpana Garikar. She's gonna try to explain to me a little bit and I'm gonna shadow her. Compact apple police okay la change poke ja opposite side la. And the QR to get don't hit up like a little ahead. But the Garam Karala and Varat Naga like a lavaji, Kakuda lavaji. The Maja Tauda did the book the Sir Kudla on a check at the point. Where is Bundabas? See, we, we deploy policeman here that is called Bundabas. Okay. And there are, you know, high rises, bandhavas, high rises, bridge over bandhavas. Ganpati adults are 25, 26 feet heighted. And it is on that truck. So the height gets to 30, 35. So high rise, we have to cover high rises also. Escort bandhavas, fixed point bandhavas. Moving bandhavas, civil bandhavas. We have to draw bandhavas map. Day one bandhavas, fifth day visajan bandhavas, seventh day visajan bandhavas. Now this is the tenth day. Without police, people will get mad. So that time police has to be there. Police sabi intervene. Albakcha Raja procession starts with the surrounded by police only. Police and RF, all police forces. Really surrounded by people? It is people. very difficult for us to go now. Ah, of course. Because you... Lalbakcha Raja is coming out. the only one empathy that he gets so much protection protection attention belief see the people here standing yeah, just, yeah, to, just to have a glance of the murti This structure has been made specially so that when Lal Bakcharaja comes down this road, they're just gonna shower him with all the petals of flowers. It's gonna be gorgeous. Look at this, this is completely mad. I'm just about to fall. I'm on the edge. People are pushing the fence. This is nuts. Like, absolutely crazy. I cannot even believe my eyes, you know? If you come here, you'll really understand. This is mind blowing. On the day of Visarjan, the fuel that Mumbai runs on is faith and belief. How else can you describe the visual of over 2,200 majestic and enormous idols slowly making their way out of their pandals and on the main roads, followed by millions of devotees? It's a sea of people out on the streets, 
filled with emotions, enchanted and liberated of their worldly ways. These enormous idols, each molded in its own distinct manner and craftsmanship, head towards the Girgaon Chopati, one after the other, reminding us of the fact that the only thing that remains constant is change itself. These never-ending fanfare and celebrations continuing to the night and anywhere you look. Everyone is happy and has a beat in their step. I soak up this positive energy and stay up all night finding stories around every corner. So Lalbag Charaja has finally made it here to Chopati, to the main beach here in Mumbai where the final immersion is gonna happen. It took Lalbag Charaja around 22 hours to get here from the place where it was originally, where everyone was praying. See, there's gonna be a final arti happening with all the Ganeshas, and then finally, all the Ganeshas will go into the water. It seems like the whole city has come here today, and it's really, really hard to penetrate the crowd and to be able to see all the Ganpatis. So I think that the best view that we're gonna get is if we go into the ocean and see everything from the inside, look at the whole city, Look at all the inversions happening. Although it's been just 10 days, but when the Lord leaves our homes, it feels like someone really close is parting with us, with the promise of coming back next year. It's a bittersweet moment that leaves us teary-eyed and with a feeling of emptiness. The sergeant also epitomizes the concept of destruction and impermanence, a reminder of the cycle of birth and death. The reason idols are immersed in water body is profound. The ocean represents infinite, and the idol, an immortal soul that lives behind its mortal self, to unite with the Absolute by surrendering itself. I'm trying to wrap my hand around the idea that everything has finished. As you can see, this whole place changed in a matter of hours. A couple of hours ago, I was just standing here in the middle of a crowd and I was not even able to hear my own voice when I was shouting. And right now, it feels a little bit calm and I'm not sure how I feel about that. When I first landed here in Mumbai 10 days ago, I jumped into the chaos and it was just madness everywhere because everyone stops what they're doing for these 10 days just to praise Lord Ganesha. But once you get into the community and you try to live this festival from their perspective, you understand why it's so grand, why it's a mega festival. Because when you live this moment from their point of view, you can really get to experience what it is and what it means to them. So slowly, slowly you start to resonate and vibrate with everyone and you start craving that madness, that craziness, the sound, the carnival, the festivity, everyone shouting, the food, it just goes crazier and crazier every single day. And at the end, everything comes to this wonderful climax. It becomes like a huge party where everyone is just celebrating Ganesha. Then the final moment, all the Ganeshas go to the final Visarjan to wash off all the sins, clean up the karma, and it's a new beginning. And that is how the greatest show on earth comes to an end.